Welcome back, folks. It is Twinkle Tips Friday, and it's time for yet another Twinkle Tip video. Now, uh, this week's lesson is actually going to be something that has been long overdue, and we're about to do some myth busting. Stay tuned. We're going to get right into it. So I want to address today the question that is asked quite often, and unfortunately, it's been blown out of proportion. I, I get this question, and it just blows my mind that it's still a question. It's something that comes up often enough that I would stop and take time to do a Twinkle Tip Friday video for you. That issue is, I hear that you can't sequence groups inside groups in x lights. Why can't you do this? Well, I'm here to tell you folks, today you absolutely can. There is nothing to stop you from taking one group in X-Lights, putting it into another group in X-Lights, putting that into another group. We call that nesting. But actually, there's a little bit of lore that goes along with why you couldn't at one time sequence groups in groups. And that's very simple. I'll be honest, x lights came out in around 2012, and it was a combination between Matt Brown and Sean Meehan, who were uh, created software that could uh, export effects into Lightshow Pro or Lightarama or Vixen or HLS uh, or other softwares, uh, and or it could also be sequenced inside that Nutcracker x lights software uh, and played through the x lights show player at the time but in in 2012 that was a huge breakthrough because a lot of people were just getting into the rgb hobby and then in 20 let's say 2014 sean came up with an idea to rewrite x lights and a year later it was march of 2015 and i'll never forget this that this version of x lights the version of x lights that we use today in 2015 march of 2015 that this version was released and it was amazing but it was also a mess because uh, it was new and there were hundreds of people trying to use it to sequence their show with it was free and it did all of this amazing stuff that we take for granted now but at one time the software was very unstable and so what the developers would do what Sean would do uh, is he would they would get so far down the road and they would find a version of X lights that had been released and it was very stable and they would call that the stable release the the the, the working release uh, that you could go download and not have to worry about getting any other ones because that one was stable, the most stable release of X Lights. And so that's what you worked within. But if you were an advanced user and you could tolerate X Lights crashing on you, what, what the developers would do is they would have everybody who was willing to keep learning about the software and, and pushing the boundaries. It was our job as an advanced user, somebody pushing the boundaries, is to report those errors, those bugs, those issues and when you reported them and they could recreate the same thing on their end they found we'd found a bug and we found ways to get past and get over and improve the software keep that in mind the the question of why can't you put sequence groups in groups people tell me not to do that Clyde why do you do that well I, I don't know exactly when this happened but somewhere in 2015 2016 there was a bug that when you put a group inside a group that it would uh, if you applied an effect to it that it would crash and there was really no way to to overcome this from a user's standpoint 
Now, I want to say that it was somewhere around 2016. And the reason I say that is because that's about the time that uh, Kevin Smith sh started sharing his Zoom room with everybody. And on Wednesday nights, we would jump in this Zoom room and share our experiences and help people learn the software. And so one night, somebody came in and said that they were having a crash, and they shared this with us, and we were able to re it was able to be reproduced. So it became known that at the time, that you couldn't uh, put a group inside a group because X lights would crash or there was some issue. Well, it wasn't long after that, maybe a month, maybe two months, maybe three months, but that happened. And after it happened, the developers fixed the problem. Gone, done, over with. But here's where the lore of this story started. And ever since then, it has not been true that you can't sequence groups inside groups in X lights. But what is true is that when you do sequence them, it doesn't look exactly the same that you think it's going to. So now that I've told you the story of where this myth came from, let's go into X lights. All right, here we are. We are in uh, what we call our pro layout. And I want to share this with you so that you can follow along. And I'm going to go into a couple different screens. There are going to be a couple videos that I have done in the past that can help you understand the different ways of sequencing uh, groups and so forth. But uh, what I want to get across to you is, is that uh, there are different ways to set up your layout. This just happens to be the way that we've set up our layout. In fact, this layout setup is probably the most common and uh, most used because it was initially recommended to do it this way back in 2015, 2016 when we all started because we began to learn things about the software. So let's get into this. First of all, you can see that we have selected here this group called All Display. Every sequencer is different, you're different, I'm different, we have different names for things, but basically everything in my entire display is in my all display group. Now, uh, to, to make things simple, we don't sequence our megatree, our megatree star, or, or the uh, uh, matrix panels. Those do not go inside our all display group. But you can see that the all display is made up of two groups, the all house group, and the all yard group. Now, already some people are probably like cringing, like, oh, how could you do that? That's just terrible. Well, wait a second. Let's go look at those things. So if we click on the all house group, it just everything that's physically on the house is in there. Now, what do we see there? We see uh, the all roof group. We see an all house decoration group. We see windows and doors. We see column matrices and house verticals. Now, let's take a second and break this down a little bit. These individual groups are what we call logical, and it's logical to put those into a group. For us, we put um, all of our windows and doors into one group. So if I scroll down here to the bottom of my list and I go into windows and doors, if I click on that, it's logical to put your windows and doors all together in one group. So we took that group and nested it inside the all house group. And then we did the exact same thing with the, with the snowflakes and the spinners. We consider the snowflakes and spinners to be something a little different, we call, and that's what we call all house decorations. They're a decoration that you hang up. There's no column matrices or house verticals or windows or anything else in there. That's just the way we do it. There's no wrong way to set up your layout. There's no right way to set up your layout. There's just what works for you. So don't think that you have to set everything up exactly the way that we do. It's just how we chose to do it. So the same thing is exactly true with what we call our all yard group. And in the all yard group, basically you can see everything there and everything there is rather logical, right? It makes sense to put your mini trees all into a group. So we call that mini, the mini tree group. It makes sense to have your mini tree stars in a group. We call that stars on trees. It's logical to put your candy canes together. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. And so we created a group with all of these logically uh, bound uh, items together and put it together that way so that it was easy for you to go to the exact group and go sequence on the group. That's the way we thought about it. 
Okay, so let's head over to the Sequencer tab, and I want to walk through a couple things with you. First, there are some videos that I've done on the two things that we're going to cover real quick, which is our display elements. You can watch that video here, and it's rather important that you have an understanding of what the display elements does, because when you sequence, it is a recommended, it, it has been recommended, we've, we've de devised our entire layout based on the recommendations that the developers made back in 2015 was if you have larger groups, put those at the top, if you have basic groups, put those at the bottom, and then if you have individual models that you want to sequence, put those on the very, very, very bottom. And so the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because we created what we call in the display elements the new master and the new master has just the basics all of our logical groups that we call them all of our larger groups which is our all uh, our, our all house decorations our uh, all yard our all house all, and all display we put those all at the top these are these are the kind of combination this is a combination of regular props in one group this is a combination of groups inside groups they're nested uh, and then this all house is also uh, uh, groups with inside groups and then all display is the all house and the all yard combined together so that's groups with inside groups with inside groups so it's really nested and the reason why that's all the way at the top is because of our own sequencing philosophy not anybody else's but I like to use the all display for the major pops and the wonderful uh, parts of songs that really stand out where I want to highlight everything on the house now it doesn't mean I just turn everything on it just means that I like to place an effect on there too so with that being said we can make this uh, this uh, view into the master view that X lights will always hierarchically set up your effects to blend at. So what is blending effects? Now, this is where things get confusing. The second thing we'll go into is sequence settings. And here you're going to see on the first tab, this is called allow blending between models. And basically what allow blending between models is, is the ability to take an effect on one individual model or a group and have it blend with something that is somewhere else on the sequence list or on the hierarchy. So the the two things that we just looked at, the the sequence settings and the, um, and I'll close this, uh, I have this checked, allow mo blending between models, the, the, these two combined with the order, the master view, the master view here, these two things combined make a huge difference in how your sequences are rendered. Now, uh, what do I mean by this? As an example, so we'll go in and I want to show you how you can uh, take the color wash effect. I'll go ahead and grab it real quick and I'll put it on, let's say, the candy canes. Now, I've I've done a vertical fade on the candy canes and you can see how they're not all lit up. Now if they were all lit up, let me put another timing mark here, if they were all lit up, they'd be lit up like that, full on and everything. But in this instance, I have a blended effect or a feathered off or a faded effect. Now what happens if I come up here to a group that has candy canes group nested inside it? Well, that would be my all yard group. So what if I put a pinwheel effect on the all yard group? Now, this is moving quite fast. Let's slow this down a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to add different colors. Let's add red and pink in here and get rid of the green. Um, and we'll make those a little bit thicker. So if I if I kind of zoom in and we, we, have, we have a little bit, of, we can see really quickly a little bit of this blending between these two models. X Slice is allowing us to blend the effect from one model with the effect from another model. If that is not applied, if that layer blending between models is unchecked, if that's not applied, and we re-render the sequence, X Lights refuses to blend the models or the two effects together. So you can see that pink and that red just is not blending with the candy canes. And the reason it's not is because you've told X Lights, uh uh, I'm not having it, don't do it, don't blend the two models together. So 
a lot of us, when we first started sequencing in x lights, we left this unchecked because we didn't realize what it was doing. We've gone forward and I've learned about model blending and how the important of that hierarchy is for uh, setting up your groups and so forth. But this is probably one of the reasons why people may tell you, don't try to sequence groups inside groups because you have to have a basic fundamental understanding of the layer uh, model blending between models and also your display elements need to be set up in a specific order so when you apply your effects based on their location in the master view that you get the result that you're expecting now the other thing that I will say specifically and let me reset this real quick uh, the other thing that I'm gonna say is is that when you place an effect on a group as default it takes everything inside that group and it turns it into one model but it's not one model if we go back here and we click on the all yard and we look at the setup of the groups that are inside there you see arches mini trees stars on trees candy canes you see those are all individual groups but the groups have a bunch of props in them and what x lite says is okay the arches is now one model the mini trees are one model the stars on trees are one model and so x lights will do this it will call it one model j just like the pixel forest here so if we put a all yard pinwheel on it it puts the pinwheel here let's go ahead and add another pinwheel there and uh, you can see the effect going across everything. Let's make it a little less, little less thick and go a little quicker now. And so you can see everything's getting that single everything doing one thing to, to all of the props because x -Lite sees it as one model. But we have these amazing things, wonderful things called render styles. Now these render styles... I want you to be aware of, I've done a number of videos, you can follow them up here, there's links on the PPD web, uh, website, we did a webinar on them, uh, and, and you can follow along and you can play with a number of these different uh, uh, render styles. And one of the most common ones that everybody uses is, I want the same effect in my group to do to be applied to everything individually and so per model default would do that and it would do it correctly if it were a basic group but as you can see here you can see on the screen right up above me you can see that hey all the all the uh, pinwheels are going over all of the individual models like for example the spiral trees the spiral trees have a pinwheel going over top of them well it kind of looks like this let's go let's go to the spiral trees right here put a pinwheel on it and it looks like this see how the pinwheel looks like that well it's because x -Lite sees the group not as a per model default but a default one item so that's what x lights is actually doing if we go back control z you can see that per model default turns all of these into one model each and applies the effect now i want to say about a year ago Gil, uh, maybe it was two years ago, it was the summertime, maybe a year and a half, uh, Gil uh, went through and added in a new render style that allows you to go deeper to sequence a group inside a group so that you could send that a layer down or to the bottommost layer no matter how many nestings you have. And what he called it was per model default deep. And if we change that, now you can see x lights is pushing the pinwheel effect down to the individual model uh, uh, individual models original default setting now here's the problem and this is why this is exactly why people will tell you you can't sequence groups in groups because look at the arches they're just flashing on and off well that's not doing a pinwheel well, you have to understand certain limitations because x lights draws a model a certain way. Oh, look, the spiral trees, they're acting a certain way as well. Well, let's go look at those things. If we physically take a second and we go to the arches and we put the pinwheel down and we change it to per model default, 
X Lights is doing exactly what the model thinks it is. But if we look here in this effects assist window, you see this big long line here? X Lights sees the arch, an arch, as a single long drawn out line. And if you, that's the buffer. That, that's the buffer that X Lights draws for an arch. Guess what it does for the spiral trees? It does the exact same thing if we put this, we put this on the spiral trees. So again, X Lights gives us render styles that fix some of these problems for us. We call it per model, per preview. And now, because that was a line, it was a single strand, now X Lights is looking at it as the preview or exactly how it shows up on your layout and it applies the effect so that it looks like the way that you think that it should be looking based on how it's perceived in your layout. Well guys, I, I hope this video has brought some things to light for everyone. Uh, this video is not meant to be nasty or mean uh, to anybody who has ever said you can't put groups in groups. It, it Quite frankly, it, it, I, I'm always surprised when I hear the question, but I, I imagine it's because that th these people might be frustrated with the way things work in X-Lights. So when you understand some of the rules, the background, the, the little things that are built into X-Lights that help you do what you'd like to accomplish, then it makes it easier for you to do those things and the way that is useful for you to do them. So the way I always do things may not be the way that you do them. And that's the wonderful thing about this awesome software that you and I are using together called x -Lite. So with that being said, guys, a huge thank you for joining me this week. If you like the video, please give us a huge thumbs up. If you haven't done yet, so hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications because there's always some great information or videos or sequences coming from Pixel Pro displays and we're happy to share them with you. If you are not busy on Tuesday nights, they are come, be, becoming quite the scene. Every Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we do a PPD get-together. Some weeks it's a webinar, and some weeks is an open mic, open Q&A session, and you're welcome to join us. We never know who is going to pop in or what's going to happen, but we welcome you and invite you to join us along with everybody else. And if you appreciate the things we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, please consider joining the PPD Sequence Club where you get one awesome sequence each and every month. And this month, we're, well, next month, we're going to have at least two. The month after that, we're going to have two. Actually, we're going to have two for the next uh, four, five, six, seven months. So join the club today. It's the only sequence club that pays you back. Thank you for joining us, folks. This is Clyde signing out. We will see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now.